Good afternoon everyone. Welcome back into my craft room for another extra edition of Stamp and Chat Live to celebrate the launch of the new Stampin' Up! annual catalogue which happened yesterday. I'm still feeling excited about it and I hope that you are too. Yesterday I gave you a quick catalogue tour. We looked at the five new colours and did some crafting as well. Today I'm going to focus in a little bit more on two of my favourite things which I showed you briefly yesterday as a bit of a teaser but didn't spend very much time on. So before I do that I'm just going to check my iPad and make sure that uh, I'm as live as I look. I look like I'm live. The little red label is there saying I am but you never know. So let me just quickly get that up. Okay. And let's see. Yes, it looks it looks like I'm there. Hooray. So if you are there too, please say hello and let me know if everything is looking and sounding OK. What I'm going to do is show you in the catalogue where to find what I'm going to be talking about first, which is the Hues of Happiness Suite and then get on and do some crafting. Then I'll repeat the process with the Bottled Happiness Bundle and I'm going to be making a shaker card to show you just how easy it is when you've got the right bits of kit. So the Hues of Happiness is a floral suite. There are stamps and dies. There's some absolutely beautiful paper and some pretty uh, glittery embellishments. I was trying to find the right word there. And those all come together in one suite. They're all colour coordinated and I love florals. So that's something that I'm going to kick off with. So I'm going to cover you over. I'm going to move you down to my desk and we're going to spend most of today crafting. So bear with me while I cover you over and get everything hopefully exactly where we want it. Okay, so I'm just fiddling around with my tripod. I'm hoping to get a little bit better view than I managed yesterday, but I won't know until I um, take the blue thing off and have a look on my iPad. So let's see how we're doing. Okay, not too bad. We've got a little bit of an angle, which I can't do anything about with this. Let's just see if we can get the bottom edge of the grid paper on there. Move my tools of the trade away. And Mary's here. She says hello to everyone. Hello, Mary. I'm so pleased you could join us again today. I'm just finding my washi tape so I can pick these leads up out of the way. One of them I can hook over, but the other one I have to kind of tape up. There we go. I'm hoping I've got everything within arm's reach today. Oops, we'll see. I make loads of lists before I do this. I get everything prepared. I list out what I need and I try really hard to have it all ready, but Sometimes it eludes me. All right. So this is the annual catalogue. Let me show you the Hues of Happiness suite. So I'm going to go through to page 108. So here we've got some lovely colourful samples here. And in fact, the colour photograph uses this suite as well. I don't know if there's a lot of reflection. I've got my catalogue with a plastic cover on it because otherwise by the time we get about six months in um, it's completely shredded where I've opened and closed it so often but I'm hoping there's not too much glare on that. So here we are then. So if you love what I do today and you think yes I need it all then you can just use this single code up here and that will just automatically put everything into your shopping basket or onto your order if you're wanting me to place it for you. But of course you can order everything separately here. So there's a stamp set here and I'll actually show you the stamp set in a moment. There's some really pretty patterned papers. There are dies here and you can order the stamps and the dies as a bundle and get them with 10% off compared with the price of getting them separately. And then let me just find the embellishments which are here on page 143. 
so these are the glossy dots and they're in four lovely colors gorgeous great melon mambo daffodil delight and pool party so they're quite quite bright they've got a bit of sparkle to them and i'll show you the actual dots now she says they're in one of my buckets here where are my dots got an entire container of them <laughs> i was so well prepared I know they're here. Ah, there we are. Okay, I'm going to use them on something so uh, I couldn't immediately find them. All right, so here's the stamp set. So this is a photopolymer stamp set. It's clear. That means you can see exactly where you're stamping. You have, let me lift it up a little bit, two little bunches of flowers here, two different kinds of leaf, there are two roses. There's a sort of a, a hybrid tea rose type flower there. And this I think of as a more kind of old fashioned rose or maybe an English rose, a cottage garden rose. There's this one here, which is a little bit like um, a kind of a double wild rose style, but it also looks quite a lot like an anemone. And this little flower here, I've no idea what that looks like, but it's very pretty. <laughs> And then lots of words, sending many thanks for all you do, congratulations, you're wonderful in every way, wishing you all the happiness you can imagine, friend, best wishes, happy birthday. So really usable greetings there and they're written in this lovely combination of a handwritten font and then block capitals, so I really like that style. The dies are a mixture of dies to cut out the images and all of these images here have a die to cut them out. And then there are also three other dies. And let me see if I can turn this over and have a, a uh, I was thinking it was gonna be black on the back, it's not. So let me just show you on the sheet. I take those off and put these on here. All right, so this one here, I love. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be alone in loving that amongst many of you. I really love it. What it gives you is the edging that looks as if you had just torn a piece of paper out of a notebook. And if I show you the annual catalogue, you can see that they've used it on here. So it gives you quite a sort of a funky edging. And I love that look. This one here will cut a perforated piece so again that looks a little bit as if it'd come out of a notebook you've got those kind of perforations running along and then this one here partially cuts through what you're going to be using and that's quite difficult to explain so I'm actually going to reach down and um, grab a card and show you what that one looks like and I am going to have to take my microphone off because I can't reach it If you're coming to let's put this microphone back on if you're coming to my card class tomorrow or doing it by post then this is a bit of a sneak peek but this is what I mean you can see that it cuts through a layer of card it also makes some partial cuts so you've got these little pieces here which stick up and give you dimension and texture so I'm hoping you can see that. I'm just going to tilt it and try to show you. So it's really pretty. It's like a kind of a trellis effect, something really quite different. And we've got another set of dies in the catalogue, uh, which give you, I think, three different versions of something similar, where you've got part of your background is cut and part of it is not. And I'm just going to put all these dies back on here otherwise you know they're going to end up all over the floor or worse in the bin because I'll knock them and they'll fall. Let me make sure I've got all of them. So there's 11 dies here. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So those are the dies. And before I put them away, um, I will show you in a moment that they also cut out some of the patterned paper. The paper is absolutely gorgeous. You've got a mixture of painted flowers and then painted backgrounds. So let me try and show you this. I want to try and show you the whole whole 12 by 12 sheet if I can. There we are. So this one, this one's going to be really hard to use. I think it's so pretty. It starts at the top with blues and uh, lilacs and purples. And then as it moves down, it comes into yellows and pinks. I think it's really gorgeous. The other side of that is lots of little crosses in rainbows, rainbow stripes. So let me lift that up just a bit to try and show you the colours a little bit better. I'll read you the list of colours in a minute. It's such pretty paper. So this sheet, uh, I think it probably needs to go this way around. There we go. This one has lots and lots of flowers on it. Again, very, very pretty. A whole range of colours, pinks and purples into blues. And on the back, you've got this really pretty little floral pattern on a dark blue background. When I was younger, this used to be called Ditsy Florals. I don't know if it is still or if that dates me, <laughs> but little tiny flowers anyway. Very sweet. So this is small tiny flowers, but this time again, we've got a rainbow going across or going down, depending on which way you hold it. And then on the back, I love this one. So this, you can really see the brush strokes. Brush strokes, and you can see the grain of the canvas that it was painted on. It's just lovely, really lovely. Then here we've got a dark background, again, with the flowers on. And these flowers echo the shapes in the stamps. And this we've got another painted background. This time it's more yellows, green and blue without your pink and purple. And then you've got two sheets which are the same but in different colourways. And let me pull over the dies fit, uh, which I won't be able to do it quickly now. But anyway, the dies. She says, I can't do it because that one's sideways. The dies fit all the flowers on here anyway. Um, where are we? We've got this rose here. We have the little flower with the stem. And we've got the cottage garden rose there. So the dies will cut out all four flower types that you have on this sheet and on the next one as well. So you've just got two, two different sets of colours there. They'll also cut out all your leaves on here too. And then on the back, we've got, again, these beautiful brush strokes in the blues and purples. And on this, you've got the pinks and yellows. Just gorgeous paper, absolutely gorgeous paper. So I've got quite a lot of comments about these. Belinda's here. Hi, Belinda. So Mary says she loves this suite. It's on her order for me tomorrow. I'm so glad, Mary. I know you're going to love it. Belinda came to my spring extravaganza and she says she's made up some of the same projects using this suite and she's working on another card with it now. I'm glad you like it. And Marjorie's here. Hi, Marjorie. I'm so pleased that you could join us. All right, so that's the paper, the stamps, the dies. Let me just show you the embellishments. So these are glossy. I think I said they were sparkly. Um, I guess they're iridescent rather than sparkly, if I'm going to be correct about it. So there's no glitter in there, but there is an iridescence. I'm hoping you can see that as I tilt it but they're lovely. So they come in some of the key colours which are featured in the paper. Um, and you have three sizes of each dot, a large, a medium and a small. And you have 180 of them all together. 
so lots and lots and lots of dots and let me pop those back in there I've got some loose ones in there as well which I will lose if I'm not careful all right so let's do some crafting so the first card I'm going to make is a very simple uh, stamped and coloured card so just some stamping a little bit of colouring in nothing difficult in terms of techniques no die cutting so very straightforward card so what do I have here I've got a card base of Tahitian Tide one of the new colours and it's what I call a sideways card base so I've got the fold on the left hand side and then I've cut a layer of Starry Sky to fit that and then I'm going to stamp three little white squares with my images and the images I've picked for this are the little bunches of flowers here so I've got those mounted ready on some blocks here and I'm also going to use the sending many thanks for all that you do stamp because I'm going to actually mask some of it and show you an easy way of doing that so I suppose that's a technique but I'm um, only just <laughs> Because these are photopolymer stamps, I'm going to use my stamping mat because that'll mean I get a nice crisp impression. And for my colouring, I'm using stamping blends because they're my absolute favourite. And I have a uh, light starry sky, dark daffodil delight, dark Tahitian tide and light parakeet party. But obviously you pick whichever colours you like. You can coordinate them to your card very easily. And because I'm using alcohol ink based markers, I'm using a memento ink pad. So I'm using a water based ink pad for my stamping and I'm colouring it in with my alcohol markers. If I was going to use watercolour pencils or stamping right markers, those are the water based markers, or I was maybe going to use um, some of my ink with an aqua painter, then I would be stamping in stays on ink because I wouldn't want that ink to run. So whatever your colouring medium is, whatever that's based on, you need the opposite kind of ink. So if I'm using alcohol based markers, I need a water based ink. If I'm using a water based marker or other water based colouring medium, then I need a solvent based ink like stays on. So I hope that's clear. So I'm going to stamp. That just looks a little bit blotchy. Let me have a look. No, it's fine. I re-inked my ink pad and sometimes I'm a bit enthusiastic when I do that. So that's my first one. And then I'm going to have two squares with the other image and I'm just going to slant those in. like that and I'm going to quickly clean the stamps or at least I'm going to clean the one I'm not going to use again I am going to use one of them on my insert but let me clean that one because I can't tell you the number of times I have done some stamping with you and then leaned my sleeve across my stamps and got an inky imprint on me there we are so now I'm just going to very quickly colour these in. I'm going to use the bullet tip on the markers. So I'm going to do all my flower centres with Daffodil Delight. I'll lift these up in a second because they are very small for you to see at a distance. And they're such tiny images, I'm not even going to try to do any shading on them, although the Stamping Blends markers are really lovely for doing shading, but I'm not going to do that. And then I'm going to colour the flowers in, in a mixture of the dark and light blues. And to start with, I'm colouring just inside the lines because the alcohol ink does spread a little bit as you're using it. And so I don't want it to spread beyond the lines of my image. I'm 
So I'm just colouring in some of the flowers on each little square with this one which is a uh, dark Tahitian Tide and I'll colour the others with Starry Sky. I've got the light Starry Sky. I love colouring. Give me a cup of tea, a wet afternoon and some colouring and I am a happy bunny. So this is the light mark of a starry sky and it's actually still quite dark as you will see in a moment when I lift that up to show you. And then I'm going to do all these stems and leaves with Parakeet Party, which is my new favourite green. I just love that green. So cheerful and zingy. Right, that's all my flowers coloured. Now let's quickly do the stems and leaves. They're very fine, so I'm using quite a light touch with this marker so I don't, don't get it too blobby. So let me put those all onto my stamping mat and show you. I get to the point where the camera won't focus anymore, but hopefully, yes, yeah, so there we are. I think, I think you can see that all right. All right, so then I have some squares of Tahitian Tide card here and I'm just going to glue my little flower shapes onto these. I've been saying for about 10 days that I'm getting to the end of this glue. It's still going strong but <laughs> it needs a bit of a shake now to, uh, to get the glue to come out. Now these little squares would look really lovely die cut with the, what are they called, the stylish, stylish shapes? Yeah, the stylish shapes dies, which if you saw me yesterday, you'll have known I highlighted as one of my favourites. So that's the new set of dies with the nesting squares and circles and banners, all with stitching around them. But I just wanted to make a really simple card with no die cutting on it. So I'm going to arrange these on here now and I'm going to have the border at the top and down the sides about the same and then the border between the squares much narrower or the gap I suppose between the squares. So that looks about right. I could measure this, actually they're not quite straight. Let's pull those down a bit. There we go. So I've got it on my grid paper, so I'm just having a bit of a look to make sure that that looks about right. Actually, that is definitely further towards the right than it is towards the left, but I'm not actually gonna measure this. I'm just, just getting it approximately right. 
and then I'll stick down the two end ones and then I'll center the middle one between them So that's my three squares stuck down. The next thing I'm going to do is tie some ribbon around. So I've got some of this lovely woven metallic ribbon. This is Tahitian Tied. So I'm really sticking with the blues on this card because they're so pretty. Let's see if I can tie a bow first time today. That's always good. Have I got a twist in that loop? I have. I wonder if I can sort it out. I might be able to. There we are. That's better. Okay, and I want that ribbon about halfway between my little squares and the bottom of the card, about like that. And then I'm going to trim off the ends, use my ribbon scissors. And then that is ready to go on my card base. I am just going to pop a glue dot under that bow because as is so often the case, it's got a little bit of a twist to it. And I actually want it to go uh, vertically top to bottom. There we are. I've got a twist on the back actually as well but that's all right that's going to be stuck down and it's such a fine ribbon that it's not going to make a lump so I'm not going to worry about that there we are and then finally I'm going to stamp my banner And I'm going to use this sending many thanks for all you do, but I'm actually just going to put sending many thanks. So I'm going to mask off the bit that says for all you do. So I've got washi tape here because my masking paper hasn't arrived yet, but which is fine because I only ordered it yesterday. <laughs> so that would be optimistic, wouldn't it really? But once my masking paper comes, I am hoping that I'm going to be able to cut little strips of it to use for this instead. But until then, I have my extensive washi tape collection to use. So I'm going to pop a, a little banner on here. And actually, before I do that, let me just show you. I'll ink up my stamp. It's really important not to forget to take that washi tape off because if I do forget, I get this horrible black smudge. And believe you me, I have forgotten plenty of times so maybe by showing you visually it'll help you to remember that you do have to then peel the washi tape off and what that tape has done is catch the ink that's over the words that I don't want and so the stamp is clean and with no ink on those words that I don't want let's try and just get this straight there we go it's actually a little bit blobby that isn't it let's do another one let's just mask it again it's this re-inked ink pad I don't think I spread the ink out properly 
I think I must have a little patch with more ink on it than everywhere else. Hopefully that's better. Let's try again. Oops. Oh, I so nearly didn't take the washi tape off. Oh, that would have been exciting. There we are. It's better. And, hmm. I thought I might put that on dimensionals, but actually I think I'm going to put that down flat and I'm actually going to use glue dots because some of this is going to make contact with the ribbon and it sticks, uh, glue dots stick so well to ribbon. stuck to my glue dots there. I'm just going to pop this over there and then I'm going to stamp the insert just with one of those little flowers. I won't put any words inside those inky stamps well out of the way before I just grace myself and lean in them. And then I've just got to stick my insert in and my card is finished. There we are. So that dark blue starry sky really sets off the Tahitian tide, the turquoise, I think. And I did, of course, make another one of those in some different colours just to give you something different. So essentially the same card. Because of the colours I used, I could stamp directly onto this layer and I just laid the ribbon over and tucked the edges behind and I coloured in these flowers using watercolour pencils which I didn't even activate, I just coloured using the pencils. So very simple card there, nothing tricky about it at all really, uh, even the masking is easy and you don't have to do that of course, you can just use your stamp as it is with no need for any fiddling around, but it is quite nice to be able to custom make uh, the words to fit what you want a little bit more accurately. So I do think that's a handy technique to have up your sleeve. There we are. So that is my first very simple stamped card. Let's pop those out of the way. I'm also going to drink some of my tea because my throat is starting to get dry. Thank you, Karen. Karen says, I said it was a simple card, but how pretty is that? I'm glad you think so, Karen. It is pretty, isn't it? You don't always have to throw everything at a card to make it pretty. Uh, so I'm really pleased that you liked that one. And I'm sure you've all got images in your collection that would work with that. It doesn't have to be something um, very large and very fancy. You can just make, you know, use just use little images and, and it'll be lovely. All right, so this time I thought I would use a card, uh, make a card, sorry, which is almost entirely patterned paper. So there's a little bit of stamping on here for the words, but that's all. So I've got one there I made in a different colour, which I'll put out of the way and show you at the end. Um, but to make this, I've picked out some of the colours from the paper, and actually I don't think I told you what those were. I said I would, and I never came back to it. So let me quickly tell you the colours in the paper. There's lots of them. We've got Coastal Cabana, Daffodil Delight, Flirty Flamingo, Fresh Freesia, Gorgeous Grape, 
Granny Apple Green, Mango Melody, Melon Mambo, Mossy Meadow, Night of Navy and Pool Party. So you've got turquoises, yellows, pinks, purples, greens. Lovely, lovely. All right. So I picked from those list, that list of colours, I've got a Pool Party card base plus an insert. Then I've got a layer of gorgeous grape and then a piece of the patterned paper. And I picked gorgeous grape because I've got um, the purple in here and I've got the pool party there for the card base. So it's this one on the back, which is the sort of the rainbow of little flowers. Hard to cover it up, but never mind. So the first thing I'm going to do is stick those layers down. And then I'll tell you what else I've got on my desk. There we are, so I can set that aside now. And the other pieces I'm going to be using are a square. I'm hoping you can see, let's pop it on there. So I've cut this with the stylish shapes dies, so it's got that lovely stitched edging to it, which I really like. I'm gonna wear out these dies, I think. They are just so useful. So I have a square there. I've got uh, a piece of card to use as a banner for my sentiment. I've got a spare one in case I mess up like I just did. <laughs> I've got some scraps of vellum and I have my bow punch, if I can find it, which is here. So we've got two kinds of, I was going to say two kinds of foliage actually, I think this is perhaps berries, but anyway, I'm going to use that leaf with the vellum. And I have some pieces of die cut flowers and leaves which I die cut from the paper I showed you the dies fitted it's very easy to cut them out and this bit is from the edge let me just pull out a piece of the paper and show you I think it's this one here when you get these all over patterns you get flowers round the edge that are kind of cut in half or even less than half uh, and it seems such a shame to show, throw them away and actually you don't need to. So I've die cut that as far as I could. This is obviously the corner of the paper and I'll show you what I'm going to do with that in a minute. So I've got two large flowers and one small one and I picked flowers that were the colours in the paper. So I've got the blues and the purples and then a couple of leaves as well. So I'm going to punch some of these leaves out with my bow punch and these little scraps of vellum. Yeah, with three I think three will probably be right one two three of those plus lots of bits and pieces that came out from partially punching the other shape And I'm also going to stamp happy birthday on here. So I'm using the happy birthday from the Be uh, Happiness Abounds stamp set here. And I've got gorgeous great ink, which coordinates nicely. My strip is longer than I'll need. and I'm going to stamp in the middle and that way I can trim off the excess, whichever side it comes. And in fact, while I've got that ink pad out, let me just stamp my insert as well. And I'll set that aside. All right, so now I'm just going to start assembling and my plan is to build the flowers around my die cut square. So I'm just going to lay everything in place. Mm. Like that, 
I think. Pop this little one up there, something like that. And then I'll tuck in these leaves. So I've got the vellum leaves and I've got some die cut leaves as well. I quite like layering one on top of the other. And what I would normally do if I was playing around is I would, once I've got everything where I like it, I would take a photograph on my phone and then it's very easy to refer back to that once I've moved everything and I'm starting to assemble it. So I'd now take a photograph and then I can see exactly where I placed everything. Now I'm obviously filming this on my phone so I can't do that so I'm going to try and slide it to one side without moving it all too much but that will just give me a bit of an idea and then I'm going to tuck the banner in under those flowers and across the square. So the first thing to go down is my square. And then I've got a big flower and I'm going to glue these in the center but I'm not going to glue them too much at the edges because that way I'm going to be able to slide the foliage in. I want to put a leaf in behind here somewhere. Somewhere like that so that bit is, is still loose. I'm going to put this one up on dimensionals and if I can find my bone folder I'm going to curl it just a little bit. So just as if I was curling ribbon I've just curled it so the flower is now a dome shape and it will then curl down nicely over my dimensionals and again I'll put them in the centre because then I've still got space to tuck some leaves underneath. This isn't quite how I had had it before. I think I've moved things a little bit, but that's okay. I definitely had some leaves tucked underneath that flower. And the thing with vellum is the glue will show through. So I'm actually just gluing the part of the stem that is going to be hidden from view. And then I'm going to tuck some green leaves in there too and they will help to hold down the unglued parts of the vellum. There we are. I like that one there. Let's pop that in there again. I'm going to glue the parts that are going to be hidden underneath the flower. And actually I don't think this is where I had this leaf but I think I might like it underneath there. But it's a little bit long so let's just shorten that. That's better. There. So even though I arranged them all very carefully, they've ended up in slightly different places, but I don't mind that. Yeah, over here I think for that one. There we are. And then I have my banner which is going to go in 
across here somewhere I think so I definitely need to shorten it yeah about there I think and I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals There we are. So that is that. Um, I'm going to add a few of these glossy dots. I think probably the purple ones. big ones I think are probably just too big there we are and then finally the insert is where I'm going to use that part flower because that will fit really nicely on a corner there and then instead of having to waste that bit that was off the edge of the patterned paper I can use it you could cut these flowers out with your scissors if you didn't want to have the dies they're not too difficult shapes but it is so nice to have the dies it's so quick and easy and you get really consistent results every time so there we are that is my card with almost no stamping <laughs> it's almost entirely paper um, and die cuts Ooh, and I've got it too far back again I always chop the bottoms off there we are let's hopefully that's better in view there's a long lag there we are and then I think I sneaked peek this to you earlier as I was unpacking everything I did another one in different colors um, and I angled the flowers slightly differently but it's essentially the same pieces just put together slightly differently and I just went with a different colorway so I've used melon mambo and daffodil delight card my ink is old olive but it's it's the same so let me see if I can lift those up so you get a little bit of a closer look I won't know until my iPad catches up whether I've got them in view for you there we are I think I do have good so harnessing that beautiful patterned paper and the fact that you can die cut it I just think is brilliant I'm just trying to put that cable out of the, the way. So that is those two. I'm going to do a quick clean of my word stamp. And then I've got one more to show you. And then I'm going to move on to shaker cards. So let's find this so this is a slightly bigger format card and on this I've used everything really from the suite I've used stamps I've used the papers I've used the dies I've used the glossy dots so let me lift it up and show you a bit more detail Can 
need to move it forward. I'm hoping that's all in view now. So I've got a gorgeous great base and a melon mambo card layer and I used some of this sort of rainbow crosses paper for the background. I was going to use white card and then I thought actually that adds a little bit of interest without being too uh, dominant. And then I stamped and die cut lots of flowers and leaves and I've coloured them in using my stamping blends. This is another one of those little stitched banners from the Stylish Shapes pack. I've used some more of the metallic ribbon here. This is the sweet sorbet one. So I've tied a double looped bow there and then I also unthreaded or unraveled some of the ribbon and it gives you these beautiful metallic threads which I've just trapped behind. And then I've added just a few of the glossy dots and then inside, I haven't done anything yet. Look at that, <laughs> I've forgotten my insert. But I will stamp one of the flowers inside. So that's something for me to do when I finish chatting to you. Uh, but I'm really pleased with that. Um, I like that card a lot. And I've, I will do another one, I think, for a birthday card. Maybe we're using the blues. So hues of happiness. It's an absolutely beautiful suite. I've barely scratched the surface of the things that you can do with it. So if it wasn't on your wish list, I'd be interested to know whether it is now, because I just think it's really lovely. I'm going to clear the decks a bit and then do a shaker card with you using something completely different, but equally nice. You would not believe how much ends up on my desk after I've done one of these sessions. So much stuff. And if I don't make a space, I shall just knock everything on the floor, which has been known. All right. So the Bottled Happiness Bundle. I'll show you in the catalogue and then I'll show you the actual thing. Is here on page 16. So there's a stamp set here and there is a punch which punches out this kind of vintage style bottle. You can get the stamp set and the punch bundled together if you wish, but you don't have to obviously, you can get one or the other. And then if I move to the back of the catalogue, I'll show you the other things that I'm going to use. So on page 141, there are these vintage bottle shaker domes. These are what make um, creating a shaker bottle card so easy and straightforward because these are pre-prepared for you. There's no cutting up window sheet or anything like that to be done. I'm also going to use these effervescent elements. These are on page 143 and they are tiny little glass, I think they're glass, balls which are lovely to use as the things that shake around inside your shaker cards. And then finally on page 151, that's where you can see the punch in a little bit more detail. It's also over here. Oops, and that's my lead fallen down. It's really warm in my room and I don't think my washi tape is, is coping. Let me just coil that up again. Try one more time. Third time lucky, isn't it? All righty. So here we have the stamp set. So there are two different bottle shapes on here. There's this tall one which fits the punch and then there's a much shorter squatter one. This is really easy to cut out by hand. There isn't a, a punch or a die for it but it's not difficult to cut out. Then still on the bottle theme you've got this one which gives you a highlight for this bottle. You've got a little stopper, you've got a label for the bottles and then you've got things to go in your bottle. So you've got this sort of sprig of, I don't know, foliage or grasses there. And then you've got some two-step stamping here. Now, actually, I think those flowers work quite well on their own. But if you combine them with this stamp stamped over the top, then you get a bouquet which has got leaves and flower centers added as well. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then there's some sentiments on here. There's let's get into the spirit, sending a little message. 
sending cheer, wine not, groan, <laughs> and overflowing with happiness. So vaguely bottle related sentiments there. And then let me show you the punch, which is here. So this bottle that it punches out, let's see how big that is. That is two and three eighths high by an inch wide or uh, if you're metric can I tell you that uh, I can tell you that in a minute but I haven't got metric on my ruler because I'm an inches girl but I will tell you that in metric in a minute when I've punched one out I can measure it on my grid paper all right so let me pull out my stamps I've got some of those mounted ready on blocks and let me show you the shaker part so these are the bottle shaker domes they come in a box of I think 10 yes oh gosh the writing's absolutely minuscule on that so this is what they look like so they're a molded plastic they're quite dimensional and they have a lip around them which has got double-sided adhesive on the top and double-sided adhesive underneath and that's what makes them so easy to use they're, they're ready glued and everything so I shall be using one of those in a minute to show you how and in here this is the effervescent elements and it's got a very tight fitting lid which is a good thing there we are because you do not want to spill these all over your craft room believe you me but they are beautiful I think they are glass they feel like glass they're really smooth little spheres there's two different sizes there's teeny tiny ones and there's bigger ones in there and they have this beautiful iridescence to them they're really gorgeous so there's pinks and greens and oranges and yellows in there with um, with the iridescence and they're quite heavy apparently I haven't counted them but apparently there are 2300 approximately in there but you just need to know that there's enough in there to make quite a few shaker domes and I'm, I'm going to click that lid back on because I don't want to knock that over I'm just going to drink some tea okay and I'm going to show you how the um, flowers stamp now these are photopolymer stamps so again I've got my mat underneath and I think it's easiest to stamp the flower section first I've tried it both ways and for me it's easier to do the flowers first but do try both ways and see what you find the easiest so that's the flower image and then if I ink up the leaf part in a different color you'll be able to see and if I just hold it over here I'll try and explain what I'm going to do so that's my inked stamp what I'm going to do is sight through here look through here and these little solid bits that look like flowers are actually the centers of the flowers that I've just stamped so you can see they've got sort of white centers so this will give me colored centers so I'm going to hold this over the top look straight down which might mean you get the top of my head and just match up those little flowers into the center of the large flowers and then everything else on this stamp will end up in the right place so I've got stems I've got partial stems that join on to some of the other flowers and so on and there you are so you can see that that has all matched up really nicely now if I colored that stamp using my water-based markers my stamping right markers or indeed using a sponge dauber and an ink pad I could get lots of different colors on that stamp so I could get yellow flower centers and green leaves for instance or I could get multicolored flowers 
but just for the purposes of showing you I've just used that one there so they are very straightforward to match up if you do them that way flowers first and then the leaves and matching the flower centers will get that stamp stamped on top without really too much trouble at all okay so let's make a shaker card so I've got some bits and pieces here I have a crumb cake card base for the front I've got a piece of blushing bride and I've got two pieces of very vanilla the same size as each other and you'll see why I've got two pieces in a moment for the inside I've got exactly the same actually I've got a layer of blushing bride and I have a layer of very vanilla now I don't usually put a double insert in my cards unless they're very special cards but because I'm going to be adding to the front both a shaker dome and some of these little tiny glass effervescent elements it's actually going to be quite heavy on the front and I think putting an extra layer of card in the back will help to balance it and stop it from falling over so that's what I've been doing so I've got my bottle dome there and then some finishing touches I've got a piece of the sweet sorbet ribbon and because this is quite a dilute form of sweet sorbet it actually goes I think with lots of other pinks not just with sweet sorbet and then I have one of these little tags which I've actually let's just take out the center there um, I've die cut using the uh, hydrangea dies which are here I'm so pleased these have carried over so there's this really cute little tag die there so that's the one I've used it struck me actually that I think the hydrangeas might well work as a single flower stamped with the bottle into the bottle but I haven't tried that yet so I've got a tag I've also got a spare one in case I mess up and I've got some rhinestones all right so let's start the first thing I'm going to do is take one of my pieces of vanilla card for the front and mark the center point at the bottom now I'm going to use my grid paper for this I've got a center mark here so if I just hold it and make sure that I've got the same measurement to the right and to the left of that center point you can't see it there can you let me bring it up here okay so I've got one two three four five six seven and a half squares there and one two three four five six and a half so I need to come this way there we are that looks better one two three four five six seven one two four five six seven there we go and if at the bottom I've got a ruler so I could have used actual measurements but you can't see that so I've moved it up and I'm now just going to make a very light pencil mark to show me where the center bottom is and that's so I can stamp uh, I can punch my bottle in the center so I've got my pencil mark there and I'm just going to make sure that that hits the center point at the bottom I can also look and see how much card I've got on either side there to help me make sure that I've got my punch in the center and I'm pushing the card into the punch as far as it will go there we are and now I'll just rub out that pencil mark and I'm going to keep this piece that that came out of there the first thing I'm going to do with that is I'm going to stamp it with the bottle highlight which is this image here this is like a a part of a bottle and oh am I going to use pink am I just going to use green mm, I think I'm going to use green actually green ink And normally I would say stamp and then punch but <coughs> excuse me for this I think actually it's easier to do it this way oh I'm gonna have to have a drink sorry I've got a real tickle okay 
So this is Pear Pizzazz ink. And again, I'm going to look straight over the top and try and stamp at the edge of my die cut. It doesn't matter if I'm slightly out, but it's fairly easy to do because this is a photopolymer stamp. So that's just giving me some detail on that piece I punched out. Now this is an entirely optional step. You can get rid of this die cut, but I think it's fun to use it. The next thing I'm going to do is add some stamping around my front layer. So I've got a bottle here, but I actually want a bottle with some flowers in it. So I'm going to stamp the flowers exactly as I just showed you, but around here. I'm actually going to tuck this stamping mat under my grid paper because I think I shall probably go through this hole here and it'll just save me having to wipe the ink off. So stamp the flowers first. So this is Blushing Bride ink. And they do actually fit around the neck of that bottle really nicely. There's a kind of an indent in the image. And then I'm going to stamp the leaves again, just as I showed you. Again, apologies if you end up with the top of my head, but it is key to look directly over the top when you're doing this two-step stamping, and then you can line everything up the best. There we are. So now I've got my flowers and my leaves in there. The next thing I'm going to do is to, I want this glued onto my underneath layer because what will happen is that my bottle shake, my bottle shaker dome is going to come through here. I'm going to pop my elements in there and then to stop those falling out, obviously it has to be stuck to card. So I'm going to use this piece of card like that. And in its simplest form, that's how I would make the shaker card. But because I fancied adding a little bit of shade and dimension using that piece that I had stamped, what I'm going to do is put my second piece of card behind, matching all the edges, and then I'm going to glue this into the aperture, and then when I lift it up it will be glued to my underneath layer like that. So let me put those back together, because obviously if I want this stamped bottle to be showing through to the front. It's got to be placed in exactly the right place. And doing it this way means that it will be. So I'll hold my card layers in place. I'm now going to pop this into the space that it actually had come out of and then lift up that front layer. and glue that down. So that now will show exactly through my aperture. Okay, so the next stage is to fill up my bottle dome. So this is going to go like that. So I'll turn it over like that and this is where I will be filling it. But first of all I need to get this stuck in place so it doesn't move when I put those little glass balls in. So I'm going to remove the double-sided tape backing from that. And then you can either hold it in your hand or you can lay it on your desk, whatever's going to be easiest. And it's just going to fit perfectly into my punched out shape. And then I just need to press all the way around there and make sure that it's really well glued. like that. So now I'll turn it over and that's where my effervescent elements are going to go. And I've got an old spoon here, my daughter's Barbie spoon. And I'm just being quite cautious as I put those in because they really will roll everywhere. And how many do I put in? Well, I think that's about the right number to end up with. So that was about about that many. 
So what's that? Half a teaspoonful probably, depending on the size of your teaspoon. And then very carefully, I'm going to put the lid back on. All right, and now I'm going to take the backing off this. I didn't do it before because if I'd spilt one or two of those glass balls then they end up stuck on there and then in trying to get them off it's easy to knock all the others out so that is now ready and then I'm going to put adhesive all the way around the outside of this so this is my other piece of card that's the same size and it's the one with the bottle cut out on it and then I just need to pop that on top of there but I'm going to take my time and I'm going to try and avoid this double-sided tape making contact with this piece until I'm sure it's in the right place. So I'm going to tilt it to the side because my multi-purpose glue here is slidable. So if I can get that left-hand side and corners correctly in place, I've got a little bit of wriggle room until I touch the double-sided tape. Now I'm happy that it's lined up and I can let go of the rest. And I'm going to push around where I know that dome is just to make the contact with the double sided tape and then I can turn it back and then just press everything really well together all around my shaker dome and I've got some glue on there I think I've got glue on my fingers so let's just take that off there we are And actually it was still, I had a tiny little bit, not quite right on the left, but it's still loose enough that I could slide that. There we are. So I'll pick that up and show you. So you can see that those little glass balls are going to shake around really nicely in there. Make a very satisfying sound. And if I move them, you can also see that we've got the detail inside the bottle, almost like the back and the base of the bottle, which I really like, but that's an entirely optional step. Um, if you think that sounds too complicated, you absolutely don't need to do that. So once we've done that, everything else is just completing the card. So let's attach this layer onto here first of all. So I've got my contrast card layer. And then my shaker layer and that shaker dome is really firmly in place it's not going to move so Belinda saying that she thinks the leaves and the flowers stamp together beautifully too and there are so many color combinations there really are Belinda you're absolutely right And then I have, oops, if I can find it, my tiny, tiny tag here. And I've actually taken the tiny little stamp from Hydrangea Haven for you to stamp onto my tag. And I think I'll use the Pear Pizzazz ink for that. So I'm going to pop this on there like that, but obviously this dome is curved. So just to make this lie nicely, I'm just going to curl the tag a bit with my bone folder. There we are. And I'll hold that tag on with a couple of glue dots because they are brilliant for gluing things onto shiny surfaces like this shaker dome. There we are. And then I, I'm going to tie a bow with my ribbon. That's probably about the right size. Let's have a look. 
maybe even a little bit titchier. Because it's such a narrow ribbon, you can tie really tiny bows with it. Always a challenge, isn't it? Getting <laughs> both ends of of your bow the same size right and again a glue dot to hold those in place and I'm just going to kind of fold that glue dot in half just to make it a little bit smaller And actually I want that I want that a little bit lower so that it hides that loop in the tag so I've just pulled that glue dot off let's try again with another one And then I have some rhinestones because so I just thought a little bit of sparkle on this might be nice. Not sure. Maybe. Yeah. Let's pop one in each. Each of these flowers. because you can't have too much sparkle, can you? There we are. And then finally for inside. Now, what have I done with my happy birthday stamp I had earlier? Because that is going to go beautifully in here, I think. The one from the Happiness Abounds is the one I'm after. There we are. I told you I had stacks of stuff on my desk, didn't I? I've got buckets of <laughs> buckets of the stuff. Okay, so my green ink pad. And then I'll just add this onto this contrast layer. It does look really nice actually to have an extra colour inside. I think that might be something I'm going to start doing more generally. But for this it does have a very practical purpose in adding some extra weight at the back to balance out the weight at the front. hold that up for you that is my finished shaker card it takes a little bit of time but it isn't difficult um, and the right things in there really do make it so much easier because everything is just sized perfectly and then I've got another one I made because I don't really think that girls should have the monopoly on shaker cards for you So I made a more masculine one here, made in exactly the same way except I've used this grassy sprig to go into my shaker. I've used the Sending Cheer stamp from the Bottled Happiness stamp set along with the label. There are some of the matte dots on the front and then I turned it into a Get Well card which I hope I won't ever need to send, but if I do, I've got one. But equally, that would make a birthday card. And shaker cards are just so much fun for everyone. 
and then finally just to show you that you don't actually have to make shaker cards and you don't even have to use the bottle from the bottle of happiness stamps here is another card where I've just used the flowers so I've stamped the flowers twice and then I've added some of the brushed metallic paper that's carried over that's in the new catalog as well and my colors here are polished pink and soft succulent and then I've added some of the little brushed brass butterflies just to make a, a, a very simple and pretty card so the flowers are really lovely in this and as I say if you want different colored flowers you can just ink up that stamp using your daubers or your markers instead of an ink pad to get lots of colors on the one image So Marjorie thinks it's beautiful. Thank you, Marjorie. I'm not sure which one you think is beautiful, but I'm very glad that you, <laughs> you like it. I wasn't sure if it's the shaker or this flower card. But let me show you what we've gone through today. There's quite a lot of, of various cards and bits and pieces. Let me see if I can reach them. Oops, just knocked the camera as well. Sorry about that. Okay, so... I started out with hues of happiness and just a very simple stamped card. Cards don't have to be difficult um, to be effective. I went with these really bright new colours. I love them because I do like bright colours, um, but you could use much more subtle, soft colours. Um, you choose pastel cards and you'd have a much softer look. Also with the Hues of Happiness Suite are these cards where I die cut from the patterned paper. So the only stamping on these is the sentiment and it's just beautiful. The paper is stunning. And then finally from that suite I showed you this large card where I've used everything really. I've used the stamps, I've used the papers, I've used the dies. I've used the embellishments. I do really like that. I'm very pleased with that one. And then from the Bottled Happiness, you can make a simple stamped card. It's made a bit more interesting because you've got your two-step stamping and very straightforward to do again. So stamp your flowers and then stamp the stamp with the leaves and just line up your flower centers to help you get everything in the right place. And then, of course, you can make shaker cards, which are a lot of fun. And I haven't even started really with using the bottles. There's lots of things you can do with the bottle stamp and the bottle punch without making shaker cards. So I'm going to have lots more fun playing with these, I know. I'm now going to just quickly turn the camera back up so I can say a proper goodbye to you. Oh, it's the shaker card that Marjorie was saying was beautiful. Thank you, Marjorie. All right, let me just see if I can cover that up. And let me just unmirror image myself. And hopefully, hopefully there, front and center, which I think I am, if a little crooked, there we go. So thank you ever so much for joining me again today. If you're watching this on the replay, either on Facebook or over on YouTube, thank you very much for joining me. It really helps me if you can like and share it on Facebook uh, and also if you can like it and maybe even leave a comment over on YouTube. And if you like my videos, do subscribe because that helps the YouTube algorithm. It helps them show me to other people and it means you won't ever miss another video. I won't be here tomorrow, Thursday, because I have a class in the morning and I just can't fit a live in as well tomorrow, but I will be here as usual on Friday afternoon. That's Friday the 6th of May, when I'm going to be looking at beautiful blues in the Sun Prince suite, which is really gorgeous. So you may have your eye on that already, or maybe once I've shown you what you can do with it, uh, you might have your eye on it then. But either way, I hope I'll see you again on Friday afternoon at two o'clock or over on the replay. Until I do, have a lovely couple of days and thanks so much for joining me. Bye-bye. And this is where I say bye-bye and then I can't get the finish button up. Okay, <laughs> now I'll say bye-bye. <laughs>